Hey y'all and welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be taking a walk down memory lane. We're going to be doing some tie-dye. This is the sweatshirt that we're going to be tie-dyeing. I like it because it's a little bit more formal even though it's just a sweatshirt but it has like this nice sleeve detail. It fits a little bit better through the body than like a normal sweatshirt would. Um, so I think once it's dyed this will be more of like a formal sweatshirt. Um, so I actually got two of these because I have two different ideas that I want to do. So one of them will be just a regular tie-dye as far as like a bunch of different colors. They're both going to be random, like I'm not going to be doing like one of the traditional tie-dye patterns like the swirl or any of the other tie-dye patterns that exist. I don't know what they are. This will be my first time tie-dyeing since I was maybe seven or eight years old, so like more than 20 years ago. So hopefully everything goes well. Um, I'm going to be following the instructions that are in the tulip kit. That's the kit that I got the colors from because it's just a one step dye. Um, so we'll go through all that once we start dyeing. Um, but like I said, we're going to do two different ones. So the first one's going to be just like a bunch of really cool colors, just random. And then the other one is going to be a mix of black and navy blue. I'm going to do some star embroidery through the front just to add some sparkle to it. I got some really cool like metallic silver metallic gold thread from Amazon. Um, so I'm going to be doing some embroidery once that one is done. So that one's going to be completely saturated. It's not going to be like a tr traditional tie-dye where there's still like some original color on it. I hope to have that one completely dyed where none of the white is showing. Um, so I'm curious to see how these turn out. Like I said, it's been a very long time since I've tie-dyed and then I had a uh, parental supervision and now I'm going to be completely on my own. So wish me luck and um, we'll see how this turns out. I hope you will stick around to the end. Okay, so first thing you're going to want to do is obviously put on clothes that you don't care if it gets dirty because we are going to be dealing with dye. So I just threw on this dumb shirt. Um, so once you're all set and you're in clothes that you don't care if it gets ruined, First thing you're going to do is prepare the item that you're going to be tie-dyeing. So there's a few different techniques. So I'm going to be using a technique called crumple. Um, so it's literally just crumpling up the shirt. So I'm just going to crumple this all up like so because I want it to be random. And then you're going to band this. So I'll put rubber bands around it. I'm sure at this point you've noticed that we're indoors. So normally they recommend doing tie-dye outside just because you are working with dyes that can stain stuff. Um, but I live in an apartment, so I don't really have a ton of outdoor space and also it's raining today. So what I did was I set up this little system in my sink where I took some old marshmallow skewers and I laid them across my sink to create like a grate for the, the sweatshirts to sit on. That way any dye that leaks through just goes straight into the sink. But you can do this indoors if you want, just be careful because it does get really messy. So now that these are all bundled up, we're going to just go ahead and start dyeing them. Okay, so now we have our little sweatshirt set up on my little rig here that I made. And I already mixed these before I started filming, but these are super easy. They come with the powder already in the bottles, at least for the kit that I bought. And you just put water up to the fill line and shake it until the dye is dissolved. And that is literally it. Um, and with this kit, sometimes when you do tie-dye, you have to wash whatever you're tie-dyeing in soda ash afterward. That is not required for this kit. All you do is let it sit for six to, well, the, the box says six to eight hours. I am gonna let these sit overnight because I do want the colors to be very, very vibrant. And the longer you let it sit, the more vibrant they'll be. So now that we have this set up, it's crumpled. We've got it on the little thing here. We're just gonna start putting the dye on.
Now this I'm just going to set to the side because both of these, once they're done, we're going to wrap them up in plastic that just keeps them damp and then we're going to let them sit overnight. I did not have enough dye to completely cover this. I may actually like the way that it looks without it being completely saturated. I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna have to wait and see what it looks like, but it may look cool like this and we won't have need to saturate it all the way. But if for some reason I do want more, I can get more of this dye. I just don't have any more right now. So um, we're gonna go ahead and wrap these up and then they are just gonna be sitting and waiting for us to see the final result. All right, so these guys have been sitting for about 20 hours overnight. Um, so what we're gonna do now is unwrap them and rinse them. We're just gonna be rinsing them in the sink until the excess dye comes out and then they will need to be machine washed as well. So it'll still be a while before we see the absolute final product, but uh, we're gonna get started now. clear which means that the excess dye is off of this it will still need to be machine washed but I don't have to hand wash anymore um, and just to save time and not have to make y'all go through that again I'm not gonna film the blue one it's gonna be the exact same thing um, and then these will both be machine washed and then we'll see the final product So that was the final product for this particular tie-dye session. So um, a little bit about like expectations versus reality. Obviously uh, the sweatshirt's not solid black or solid blue. It obviously has quite a bit of extra white space. And my intention was to completely make it a solid color that obviously didn't happen, but I actually like the way that it looks. So I'm gonna just keep it the way that it is. Um, but I'm still gonna add the star embroidery to it. I'll probably just do it only in like the dark spot. So it's kind of like a starry night thing. If I were gonna do this again, which I probably will tie dye again in the future, if I wanted to make something that was completely solid, I would not do the crumple technique, which is what I did for both of the sweatshirts. It turned out great for the other one. I, I think it looks exactly the way I had in my mind. Um, full disclosure, I did go back and add a little bit more dye to the front. There was a lot of white space on the front and I had some dye left. So I went in and added a little bit more just to use up the rest of the dye that was there and to add a little bit more color to it. I didn't document that part, but it does have a little bit more of that dye on the front. But this one, I'm just gonna leave it exactly the way that it is other than the embroidery. Um, next time around, if I wanted to do something that was completely saturated, I would just lay it flat and then just like basically fill it in. That would be a much easier way to do this or just dye it with like rent dye or something. But um, I'm gonna keep playing around with tie dye. It was super fun. If you wanna do something that is pretty low cost, I think that kit cost me like $15 on Amazon. Um, that gives you a lot of like creativity and a chance. You just never know what's gonna happen with tie dye until you open it after you put the dye on. So that's a pretty cool part of it. And my little like uh, kitchen setup that I made with the little skewers was pretty efficient. I'm glad that I did that. Uh, don't be lazy though. I was super, super lazy and left the dye in there, like the dye that dripped and um, it did stain my sink a little bit. So just rinse it right away. Don't leave it in there because it will dye um, your sink. But um, as long as you're not lazy and you clean up immediately after you get done, it's a pretty seamless and easy process. You just spray your sink out and all the dye goes down the drain. So that worked out pretty well. I was very happy with that. 
Um, overall, we'll 100% be doing tie-dye again in the future. Highly recommend it. Super, super fun. Um, the embroidery for this sweatshirt, I'm going to do on a different video. So I'll be doing that as a separate video if you're curious to see what that process is like. I'm super new to embroidery. Like literally this sample that I did on here is the first time I've ever embroidered. So we're going to see how it goes. But I'm going to do that as a separate video. And um, so stay tuned for that. Um, if you liked this video, uh, please subscribe. Also, you can follow me on Instagram. It's going to be the same name uh, so far from Ordinary SUW instead of SO. Um, so follow me there. That's just going to have like a different types of content than what I'm going to have on this channel um, and kind of keep up with my day-to-day -day life versus like just doing the tutorial videos. So um, give that a look if you'd like. Uh, subscribe to this if you would like, you know, comment, give it, give it a thumbs up, that type of stuff. So always appreciated, whatever you feel inclined to do. Um, and we will see you on the next one.